Hello there. So at the time of recording this in the YouTube timeline, you guys have just been introduced to Lalo. Or no, you guys have seen my reaction to being introduced to Lalo for the first time, in which you guys already know who Lalo is because you've seen the show and you know what he's capable of. So yeah, what's going on guys? My name is Ellie Moses, a 23-year-old law and film student here from Sydney, Australia, shooting his shot, baby. And today we are up to episode four, I believe. Yes, episode four of Better Call Saul season five. This has been a fantastic journey of watching this show for the first time. This episode is titled Namaste and we're gonna get into the reaction we're gonna have some fun with this thing and let's smash it because this show is absolutely phenomenal and i feel like it's just gonna keep getting better and better and go balls to the wall soon let's go is he looking for um alpine shepherd boys like the little statues <laughs> maybe <laughs> potential resales Or he's testing something, maybe for a case. Something to do with weight and throwing. Yeah, kettlebells! <laughs> I can let that go for 30. Uh, 75 for all three? <laughs> Deal. Three bells, three bowling balls. <laughs> oi, 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 oi. <laughs> Relationships, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is the real life shit. <laughs> What's your day look like? I got MDC in the morning and uh, court in the afternoon. Oh, and I'm finally doing that lunch with Howard. Yeah? Oh, yay! Let's see what he wants. Hopefully it will be short and sweet. You? Uh, yesterday was bad. Today I'm going to fix it. Sounds like a plan. See ya. Pull the initial research we did on lot 2375. Yes. Yeah, all of it. Uh, permit status, costs, projections. Uh-huh, are they on digital? That, that that tells you a lot about Kim that she's sweeping like obviously all right you could let the council take care of it or something like that um I don't know how it works in the US but um yeah it says a lot about Kim's character in terms of her caring for others caring for the community also feeling remorseful for her actions a lot of the time um and taking action for those actions that she feels remorseful for and trying to mend those things. Like you saw uh, last episode of Mr. Acker, despite having that rant, she took the initiative to, you know, go out and search for houses just to help him out, to lend a helping hand. Like she's a good Samaritan. Like that's how I feel about it. And it's good. Because, like, all right, throwing beer bottles at the balcony. It's a stress reliever. Yes, it's wrong. It's probably public indecency, like, or like um, uh, nuisance to neighbors and stuff like that. Um, but like, it happens, uh, people vent and stuff like, obviously they could have damaged, like someone could have been walking by, they could have hit them with a bottle. But um, yeah, I think it just says a lot about Kim that she's trying to clean up after her own mess. Good, how are you on PowerPoint? She's working at the same time, right. technically. She's on goals. So. <laughs> Multitask. Should be there in 20. You gentlemen have had a busy week, huh? <laughs> Bail has been denied. The mystery there. 50% off. <laughs> okay, let's start at the beginning. Somehow you two are short on priors, so I think I can get the DA to knock the drug charges down to simple possession. We can lay responsibility for the felonies at the doorstep of your unfortunate dependence on hard drugs, but we're going to have to argue for rehab as part of probation. Hell's no. I hate rehab. All right, don't get all in the <laughs> That's Skinny okay? Pete, the light version. <laughs> I've heard that there exists certain less than reputable establishments that will provide certification 
without the pleasure of your actual attendance. I could conceivably find such a place for an additional fee. Arg, I ain't going to rehab. Mm. You go, you don't go. That's between you and your God. But you gotta <laughs> tell the judge you'll go, and you gotta sound like you mean it, okay? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, all that's left is your many, many misdemeanors, which include graffiti, vandalism, littering, public urination. <laughs> <laughs> Nature's calling you, you gotta answer it. Oh, hold it too long, you get kidney stoned. 12 months in stir. Now, with good behavior and overcrowding, takes it down to six, maybe five months. That's minimum security. It's gonna be like taking a cruise, only less dangerous. <laughs> Christ, man, five months? Down from five years, consecutive, or worse, if they get this heavy stuff to stick. Now, come on, you do your months, you do a little community service, maybe a year probation, and your gold, pony boy. Sound good? Yeah, okay, we, we, we could take that. No doubt. Great. So, all that's left is my fee. <clears throat> okay, so for my time, court costs, filing fees, looking at, uh, let's say about <laughs> four grand. All Magic right. number. Say what? Yo, don't, don't play us like that. What about 50% off? That is 50% off. <laughs> my normal rate would be 4K each. Dude, <laughs> this is BS. They got lawyers here, they gotta give us, you pay nothing. Free lawyers? Public fenders. Four grand, we can get a lot of scum damn it. I'm sorry, free lawyer? Are you saying that you want a free lawyer? We're just talking over options. <laughs> and you know, free is, you know, free. Did you ever hear the phrase, you get what you pay for, you know, Nick? Without me, they're going to lock you up and throw away the key. I'm sorry, did I say five years? You, you go ahead and play Russian roulette with a public pretender. You're going to end up doing a decade in Lost Lunas. You twerps even know who I am? I am Saul Goodman. Okay, you think 4K is too much? Yesterday, I got paid 8K just for the afternoon. That's how good I am. I am the real deal. You're lucky I'm even talking to you. You know what? The second best lawyer mug hey, right there. Come on, man. Don't, don't be like that. Hey, we're sorry, yo. We're sorry. Y you. We, 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 we want to go with you. 100%. Please, sir. <laughs> sir. <laughs> okay. Before you make my headache even worse, no, you cannot pay me with the money you stole. Okay, that cash is exhibit A for the prosecution. So, <laughs> relatives? Anybody you haven't already fleeced? My grandma, maybe. Yeah, she's got a house. And a car and shiz? Yeah, Grandma, she's perfect. Okay, so you tell Granny, faster she gets me my money, faster I work my magic. My wire info is on the back <laughs> of that card. I look forward to hearing from her. Hey, from a potential 10 years to Coming six out. months, that's like a really, really, really... Oh, that's the same cop that um, was overseeing like the negotiation with Hank and Gomi and Crazy 8 and Soul. <laughs> right a district of new mexico that's me thought so your gavel work is legendary uh thank you <laughs> i'll let you get back to your lunch ian catch you in the back nine next week see ya jimmy is back nine a golf Not reference a no butter, side of steam rich people tings <laughs> great sure have it <laughs> great i'll put this in i'll be right back with you Jake. saul goodman am i allowed to call you jimmy uh saul goodman is my professional name but my friends Still call me Jim. <laughs> you can too. Oh. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, what I mean is, if he's not Jimmy McGill, who is he? What's he about? Hmm. Well, Saul Goodman is, uh, he's the last line of defense for the little guy. Are you getting sold down the river? He's a life raft. Are you getting stepped on? He's a sharp stick. You got Goliath on your back. Saul's the guy with the slingshot. I love the analogies. He's a writer of wrongs. <laughs> He's a friend to the friendless. That's Saul Goodman. <laughs> your name is a part of that firm. Now it's tainted. We took your legacy away from you. You say so hard. No, no, I, I've been thinking about this a lot. And you know what? We should have hired you. I mean, don't worry about it. That's ancient history. You deserved a shot. And I could have given it to you. When you got barred, or when you brought a sandpiper, both times, I should have shown some backbone. It would have been the right thing to do. I think I think Howard is being genuine here. Um, 
But I feel like sometimes the delivery from Howard comes across as off. But I think he's actually being genuine. I feel like Howard is genuinely, I think, trying to correct some of the wrongs or he's sort of like on the right path. He seems somewhat better than what he was before um, in terms of like mentally. Um, maybe he, he could be hiding it still, but like he seems okay. I am glad you had this cleansing moment of clarity, Howard. Good for you. But I feel bad that Jimmy's being a bit savage towards Let him. Let me be clear. I'm not interested in yesterday. I missed an opportunity with you. And I think it's time to correct that. I'd like you to come work at HHM. <laughs> you want me to work for you after all this shit that's happened between us? Oh, as far as I'm concerned, that's between you and Chuck. Christy Esposito. Yes, Christy. Yeah. You stood up for her. And that got me thinking about judgment and honesty. <laughs> and when you kicked my ass last year, you weren't wrong. You say what you mean. Listen, you don't want to be surrounded by liars. Howard, you might be in the wrong profession. <laughs> Look, <laughs> it's simple for me. You're smart, you're scrappy. You're a go-getter. You don't wait for things to happen. You make them happen. HHM is growing again and could use someone like you. I could use you. Charlie Hustle. Act of desperation? Howard, I... You don't have to answer right now. Let's just enjoy lunch. Offers on the table. But do me a favor. Live with it for a bit. Okay. Bro, oh, please, just go to HHM. I just want him to be employed there just so I can see Lalo as a client rock up to the head office. I just, that would be pure cinema. And I think you guys would think the same thing. Pure cinema, Lalo rocking up to HHM, like the head office. Like That would be unbelievable for a meeting with everyone. I just, I just pictured that in my mind. Yes, take the job just so I can see Lalo there. I don't know why. I feel like Lalo in a head office space would be like, Chaos waiting to happen. Like, it'd be unbelievable. <laughs> like, Thanos attacking Avengers headquarters. That's, that's what it is. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time. Good to see you, Jimmy. <laughs> I feel like Howard, like, I think he actually genuinely means well. And, like, he's a very interesting character. Like, he just, yeah, I feel like, he meant well even in the past, but he just... Oh, namaste. He just came across wrong. I feel like he's had a spiritual renewal. <laughs> Mentally as well. <laughs> Maybe he's been seeing... Um, glance at the package, I'll give you going to some yoga idea, or we'll spiritual retreats. <laughs> There's a raft of TCPA compliance issues, but... Decided to put the center here on this parcel of land, lot 1102. But I think we need to reconsider the other contender, lot 2375. 2375, the vacant lot with the flooding problem. Yes, that's right. Initially, we did have uh, concerns about the infrastructure. But is she I looking out for Mr. Acker? I was on the council this morning, and she told me the city has recently shored up all of the drainage along the Arroyo. So that would not only speed up our construction, but make for a more efficient operation overall. And over the long term, it seems to me that <laughs> these improvements will pay dividends and more than offset any delays. Since we won't need a redesign, we could be back on track in a matter of two to three weeks, maybe less. Are you saying that we lose three weeks and what, eat the cost of the land that we already own? I know this isn't really my department, but according to our own projections, the land we already own will more than double in value in the next five years. This could be an excellent investment. There's potential here to turn Tucumcari into a real Mesa Verde company town. And when you add in the, the reputational risk with lot 1102. Reputational risk? You're talking about Everett Acker? Ousting a man from his house. It's never a good look. Kim, let me ask this real plainly. Is lot 1102 our land or not? Are we in the right? As far as the law goes? Yes, you've acquired right, it. Then. Legally. Well, I settled it. Lawfully. Not gonna let anybody chase me off. This fellow wants to make a fuss. Well, 
our land and our right to do with it what we want. I agree. We've already offered him a sum for relocation far greater than what we've paid any of his neighbors. Kim, thank you for the thought, but I say we move forward with Lot 1102. How about we get the lights? Yeah, all right then. That's You're just going to have to swallow that pill, Kim. She has to. I just had to mention it. <clears throat> like, I, I, like, the law firm I work at deals with a lot of... Um, commercial um corporate it's a commercial conveyance in corporate and there's a lot of property developers we act for and there's a lot of property development it's just it, it's just part of life nowadays with a lot of the expansion happening and yeah it's unfortunate but it's like i i, I feel for kim here because he's she feels like she's trying to be the superhero that's trying to save everyone like i know she has no superpowers or anything but it's like um like it's like that it's that one superhero that tries to save everyone's lives um and when that one life or like when um that one individual suffers or like you know dies it's just that you feel like the whole world um has just fallen on them like i i i, I feel like i articulated myself wrong here but i feel like you get the analogy i'm trying to say i feel like kim feels like she's that one superhero in the legal industry that needs to save everyone everyone deserves justice and a fair outcome when sometimes unfortunately it is not um those have to suffer the hard consequences of the law and it is what it is like they legally acquired the land legally it's theirs he already went to court and challenged it and they said it's mesa verde so you can't do much about it and i think yeah she's feeling really guilty and burdensome about that and I, I, like i said at the start of the episode it says a lot, a lot about kim's character um that she wants to help everyone and she's got good intentions and a real kind heart but it's just unfortunate you're gonna have to learn to cope with that in life sometimes i feel like it's a good superhero arc <laughs> like usually the superhero that saves the day and there's always that one time where the superhero cannot save everyone and yeah it's a tough pill to swallow you're getting worked up over nothing, I'm fine. Look, what if maybe you come for dinner sometime next week? We can have those pork chops you like. You've been working so hard, you deserve a little break. Let you get back to yourself. Mike's got that look. Get back to myself? Ah, oh, he's got that look. Nah, nah. <laughs> Something's going on with you. Talk about losing the tempo. I don't know what, but I'd be more comfortable if you didn't sit for Kaylee for tonight swallow that pill Mike swallow that pill thank you there is a lot of shots in this show of characters interacting uh, through a glass mirror in a, a through a door a kiss show at the pavilion I had those leather guys uh, in makeup coming in and buying Slim Jims and beer. Even when night. Howard approached Thank Jimmy, you, Mr. Harkness. there Is was the like the twin mirrors you in the door. present in the court today? Yes. And could you point him out to the court, please? He grabbed up the money from my register and run off. Yeah. And there was no one else in the store. Not at that time, no. And since the camera system wasn't working at the time, you're the only one who saw the perpetrator. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, so this person came in and they bought something. I think it was an Almond Joy. And they bought an Almond Joy, and when you rang them up, that's when they snatched the cash from the register. Sounds like it happened pretty fast, but you say you got a good look at them, correct? Yes. Are you sure that's the person? There's no doubt in your mind. Take your time. I don't need time, that's him. Now, would you be surprised to learn, Mr. Harkness, that the person you just pointed to is not the defendant? What? And my client is in the back of the courtroom. Mr. Sakey, would you please stand oh. on objection? Now, the person you ID'd is named Hollis Early. He's a bartender down in Berlin. He has a very good alibi for the night in question. Your Honor, objection. Oh, oh Mr. Goodman. Really? You didn't recognize him either, Your Honor. All right, settle, settle down, everybody. Settle, settle. <laughs> Fair play. <laughs> As always, please refrain from discussing the case until then, and I will see counsel in my chambers now. Adjourned.
Clever play right there. You saw the fireworks. It was a bit unorthodox. But uh, check this out. Two sweetest words in the English language. Miss trial. <laughs> Not bad, huh? Not bad. But is everything OK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just I have a case in Tucum Carry. And there's something I want to discuss with you. Don't tell me she's going to get Jimmy to enlist for Mr. Acker. Oh my, that would be mental. I also saw that scene right there, Kim waiting and everyone dissolving out of screen, um, obviously to showcase the passing of time and how long she's been staying in the courtroom. I feel like Kim sees that area, that 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 trial room as her arena where she can help individuals. That's that's her city. That's that that's 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 her that's her New York to Spider Man in my opinion, right there. That's like that's the city I got to defend, um, and this is where I can do my work and defend others. Like whereas you saw in the scene, um, in the boardroom in the meeting with Kevin and Paige, yeah, she can give advice and potential suggestions, but in the end of the day, it's those executives. Um, and it's her clients that make the final decision. She's bound by their decisions. But I feel like when it's the pro bono cases or representing a client, that's where you can carry out your superpowers and defend them. That's your city. That's your arena. That's how I see it. I don't know if it's a good analogy, but that's how I see it. This man is going to have to play the long game. <laughs> Hi, Tiffany. Good work. Everything all right, Mr. Frank? This is acceptable to you? <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Don't take it out on the employees. I thought Deshaun. Not Lyle. I'm not seeing anything. It's. I understand. Like, now that I look closer. Yeah, I think I see maybe. Yeah. Okay. I will take care of it, Mr. Ring. All right. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. Sorry. Stressful times for Mr. Frink. <laughs> One of the dead drop zones. You put a dead drop in the culvert. <laughs> I mean, rain comes, and pfft, your money's on its way to the uh, Rio Grande. <laughs> so you use a different drop during the monsoon season. <laughs> culvert. <laughs> That's a weird word. It's not French. In Spanish, it's Alcantarilla. Well, it, it, it Alcantarilla. doesn't come from Spanish. I mean, you ever hear anyone walk around talking about the majestic culverts of Spain? Who the hell goes around talking about majestic culverts? Como está habla español? Copy. Standing by. Hey, Byers and Vaca, roll back 30 yards. If I can see you, he can too. You know what? I'm going to get nervous. I'm gonna keep them nice and relaxed. <laughs> Smile away, boys. Take your mom Smile. on date night. <laughs> With your left hand every night. Uh, <laughs> Is it okay, Mr. Frank? You can go home, Lyle. If it's not right, just let me try again. I, I can get this right for you, sir. Please. It's gotta be perfect. It's got to be 99% pure. If you would like to take another crack at it, then go ahead. Thank you. A sacrificial lamb on Gus's side. Let you know, bro, at the end of the third job, you're gonna get picked up by the cops. <laughs> Shit. You make us. I like how the scenes here of Gus waiting, obviously, for the inevitable phone call of what's gonna go down with the EA is juxtaposed with Lyle vigorously cleaning the fryers, which are probably pretty clean. Damn it. 
ahead of him. Gotta skate to where the puck's gonna be. You don't know where he's going. I got a feeling. Intense chase sequence cut in between an intense cleaning session. Let's say get that cardio to work, boy. Just a quick suggestion. Obviously, to have the juxtaposed cuts of Lyle's cleaning and the DEA, obviously. Um... Oh, did anyone hear that thunder? Damn! Um, nah, to, uh, I feel like right here, we're seeing both sides of Gus's world. Obviously, we're seeing the operation of Los Payos Hermanos, and we're seeing the cartel business, and he has to deal with those two sides. But when we, he's portrayed in... Um, he's obviously portrayed very differently, um, or like, to us, he's portrayed differently when he's interacting with Los Poyos Hermanos, for instance, employees, um, Los Poyos Hermanos customers, um, and we see another side of Gus. I, I feel like this is more than just some OCD. Um, I feel like he himself is letting the cartel business um, and what's happening in the cartel world and those frustrations leak onto his other world, which is the Los Poyos Hermanos, and a little bit of those frustrations are beginning to leak onto Lyle. I feel like because I, this is this seems so out of character for Gus to act to his uh, to, this seems so out of character for Gus to act like this to his employees. Um, because we've seen how calm, composed, and likable he comes across to his employees. Um, and this seems just so different and so out of whack. That's why I feel like the frustrations of what's happening in the cartel world um, is really getting to him. Like, he's really, really frustrated. And he's, he's probably at his most dangerous at the moment with how frustrated he is with things not going his way. He's having to play the long game. And he's, his patience is being tested. <laughs> Get that cardio to work, boy. At least I can kick back and watch this scene knowing no harm will be done to Gomi and Hank. <laughs> For now. What do you say, Gomi? Let's spelunk. You know what I love about this show as well? Like, the whole universe in general, but especially Better Call Saw because um, it's a prequel show. They know when to inject the right amount of energy into the series with introducing a character here and there um whether it be a new character such as lalo or returning characters are we gonna go across the border here 696 698 seven hundred thousand dollars and some change they got the cash Damn. But they didn't get their arrests. Sure took a bite out of crime tonight, McGruff. Not their arrests. Mm, booby prize. Come on, man. We got the money. We got the douchebags who did the drop. We got three assholes. Oh, us. okay, okay. They got arrests. And we put Molina back out on the street. Who knows what else he's going to scare up. Yeah, we we'll go upstream, Gomi, not downstream. Hank always knows there's something more to it. He's never satisfied. He when right, Hank is satisfied, then you can be satisfied. Up, circle up. And better yet, we got ourselves a buttload of money. All right, just shy of a million dollars. So some major dickwad of a dealer's hurting tonight. And that's because of all of you. <laughs> so, show my appreciation. <laughs> We're all going no Neils and first round's on me. Yeah. 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 All right. Thank y'all. He not sat upside Hank, but he just has to show he's satisfied. All clear. And the money. They got it. Went down like it was supposed to. That million dollars, ouch. Or oh, nearly a million. Six figures, not seven. Oh crap, so my internet just cut out with the thunderstorms. If you guys had heard it before, so I have to stop the recording um, to save the recording because I don't want my power to cut off. So I'll be right back with the reaction.
Um, so if it looks like obviously I'm wearing different clothing and it's a different time of day, I'm actually recording this two days after um, the episode, like if it's a jump cut to a different time because uh, a massive storm hit and our internet's been out for a couple of days and it hasn't been working properly. And at the same time, I had to save the recording before the power went out and the power did eventually go out. So I had to save the recording at that time and I couldn't get back to it eventually because I had work the following day. And yeah, I'm just finishing the remaining um, 10 minutes of the episode right now. So I just got to explain that there's a a change of the time of day and a change of clothing and stuff like that so yeah i'm just gonna finish it off and yeah let's get into it and let's smash it down like you're supposed to mr fring it's just about to come find you thank you lyle Man. you can go home lyle looks like he's aged 10 years <laughs> from that cleaning set um but is it like you think it's okay it's clean it is acceptable Good night, Miss Free. Mr. Raku! <laughs> Send in the cavalry, baby. I've had it up to here with you Mesa Verde scumbags. Get bent! But I'm not representing Mesa Verde. In fact, I'd like to represent you, sir. I don't need a lawyer. I don't want a lawyer. Nothing you can say is going to change my mind. Now move your damn foot. Sir, if you would just, just please just take a look at my proposal, okay? Because I think you'll find it persuasive. I don't <laughs> just want it. Look at it. <laughs> just look. What do you see? Fucking a horse. <laughs> Sir, I hate Mesa Verde. I hate them. Looking down at us from their glass tower, they think they can shit on whoever they want, and we just have to smile and say thank you? Look, picture me as the man and Mesa Verde as the horse. I'm the guy who'll do whatever it takes <laughs> to stick it to them. F the horse, baby. Guess who's got a new client in Tucum Carry? <laughs> what? That's right. Put some beers on ice. We'll celebrate when I get back from the hinterlands. Yes. That's the best news I've heard all day. How the hell did you convince him? Uh, uh, visual aids. You'd be surprised what you can find on that internet. So. I, I, I don't know if you guys... I don't know if I agree with Kim's tactics here. Obviously... I, I talk about, you know, Kim being that good Samaritan, always wanting to help out individuals. And yes, it is a sad and unfortunate situation for Mr. Racco. But it seems like all the other neighbors were handsomely paid off. And like I said, I feel like this happens in the real world a lot of the times. And... I just don't think it's right that Kim is, you know, going behind Mesa's, Mesa Verde's back, enlisting in um, Jimmy he uh, Saul Goodman here to represent Mr. Acker and give Mesa Verde even a bigger headache just to protect this single lot and potentially to get them built to build on another lot, which Kim proposed earlier on. She is backstabbing Mesa Verde here, and I completely feel bad for Paige and Kevin now as well, who are like business-minded people trying to get a move on trying to expand and yes i know it's the big corporate bad guys but i don't it doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like they're doing anything wrong they're getting the development approvals they're acquiring everything legally in the eyes of the law it's right um but this is just going to cause a bigger delay here and it's going to be funny because if Jimmy, uh, if Saul goes uh, and re like he's representing Mr. Acca, that means he's going to go up against Mesa Verde and Kim potentially is going to represent Mesa Verde. But does that mean she's going to sabotage her representation of Mesa Verde just to get Mr. Acca to win? Like, is she going to purposely make her argument in cases weak so they lose the case? Going to be interesting. Chinese and tonight? what what does that say morally and ethically about a lawyer representing um, his or her client to the best of their abilities? Like... Yeah, sounds good. I'll see you later. Bye. Is that my thumbnail shot? <laughs> What's this brother up to? Oh, the volleyball! Boom. Fair play. That was a decent throw. <laughs> Bingo.
Oh, Howard? Really? His house? What, what did he do to deserve that? <laughs> he just stands there on his balcony, dumbfounded. <laughs> Oh, these are the same guys that, yeah, I was about to say, Grandpa. Does Michael see it as an opportunity for some individuals, like, to take his anger and rage on? That's Gramps. I feel like he's, yeah, he's doing it on purpose, just probably... Take it out on people. Yo, Gramps! Oh. <laughs> I was like, realistically, he's not gonna take everyone on. First one free, dickhead. Oh, he's still getting some licks in. Is he across? Uh, is he across the border? What, what? Is he across the border? <laughs> or is he so like? Yeah, uh, who saved him? Uh, that's gonna be interesting. Uh, I'm actually. Uh, I want to keep watching, man. Every time I'm like, I finish an episode, it's just like we gotta keep watching. We gotta keep watching because this show is absolutely outstanding, and it keeps like just making me want to watch more. And now I'm invested more in both sides of the story. This Mesa Verde thing is cooking up, and it's gonna be interesting to see. Jimmy take on a big corporate giant, um, and I don't know, I don't, like I said, I don't think I agree with Kim's methods here, like, I, I know, like I said, she wants to do right by everyone, but you can't always save, like, every individual, I feel like that's always a big part of the hero's journey, in my opinion, like a superhero's journey, like, that one individual they cannot always save, like, the love interest, for instance, like, you, you see it time and time again, um, but, I feel like this is going to have disastrous consequences for both their careers. Oh, actually, maybe Kim's career. She's taking a major risk here doing this. And imagine, like, that. I don't think Mesa Verde or, like, Paige or Kevin know that they're in a relationship together. Um, so there's something ethically and morally wrong about, you know, these two lawyers confiding with one another. And especially Kim going or, like, telling a lawyer to go up against the firm she represents. So... Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see everything play out. I cannot wait to see this case develop with Mesa Verde um, and G uh, G Jimmy, now Saw and Kim. Um, and then obviously, you got the cartel stuff going crazy at the moment. So both storylines now are heating up, which I'm very excited about. So yeah, um, that's it for this reaction, ladies and gentlemen. I do hope you guys are enjoying the reactions. As always, it's been your boy Lee Moses. Take care. God bless. Peace.